Hey guys, welcome to your free tutorial on how to use AI prompt engineering. We're going to be using ChatGPT, the most popular AI chatbot, uh, and a couple others like Google Bard and Perplexity, and run through some basic prompt engineering tasks that will benefit business professionals and career shifters. So first, let's, let's log in to ChatGPT and get started. So ChatGPT has been uh, around since November 2022, and you can find it at chat.openai.com. You'll need to register to use it. It's free. Uh, there's a paid version called GPT-4, which we will tackle in another training, but all of our exercises today will be in the GPT-3.5 version of ChatGPT, which is completely free. So this is the ChatGPT interface, which is very, very simple. It's got some options here so you can get examples. We're just going to dive into the use of ChatGPT, which is this message box on the bottom. The first thing we're gonna do is what we call a zero shot prompt, meaning you just ask ChatGPT a question or you know ask it uh, to elaborate on something. The easiest zero shot prompt that you can do is called text completion. So for example, I'm going to type here prompt engineering is. So here the intention is you want to understand about prompt engineering. So you just type a first uh, few words and then let ChatGPT answer the question. And as you can see, uh, the moment you type a question, ChatGPT gives you an answer. It says here prompt engineering is the process of designing and crafting effective prompts to interact with natural language processing models like GPT-3. And it gives you the key aspects of prompt engineering. You know, these are tips on how you can use prompt engineering uh, better. Other than text completion, you can just actually ask ChatGPT an explicit question like, uh, please explain the basics of prompt engineering. And again, similar to earlier, it will give you uh, kind of information. So in this case, ChatGPT is kind of a better version of Google search. Google search gives you search uh, results uh, on uh, based on the query or the search string, while ChatGPT actually gives you the answer. At this point, At this point, I want to also introduce you to other chatbots that are around. So there's Google Bard, uh, which is uh, um, another chatbot, this time run by Google. It functions similarly. So we can do the exact same query prompt, engineering is, and then let's see how Google Bard answers that question. Another chatbot that I like to use is Perplexity. Perplexity is... Uh, uh, a version actually of, uh, of uh, GPT 3.5 but the difference is both Google Bard and Perplexity actually offer citations while ChatGPT does not so I'm just going to type the same uh, prompt from engineering is and then let's see what Perplexity comes up comes up with so as you can see here the answer has these uh, footnotes and the footnotes refer to the sources that uh, perplexity came up with so if you're the type of person who wants some references from the internet on your answer perplexity is the chatbot for you bard has a similar output to chat gpt but the difference is you can also view the other answers so what uh, bard did is come up with many answers and kind of give you the best one but you might want to look at the other drafts that bard came up with Okay, so we're back here. Okay, so for the remainder of the video, I'm just going to use ChatGPT, but you're free to use Google Bard and Perplexity as well. Okay, after zero shot, the next example is what I call summarization. Probably the best use of these chatbots, if in my opinion. So I have here an article. You can select any other article you want. I'm, I, I'm just going to use this article as an example. So this is the May 7, 2023 Philippine News Agency article uh, talking about Senator Aimee Marcos on regulating AI 
to protect the BPO sector. So this is a very relevant article for those looking at AI. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of the text of this article and then paste it here on the prompt. So I'm going to you type the word text and then uh, encapsulate the entire text in three hashes. You can use any delimiter you want. It can be three backticks, it can be three hashes. The whole point is it's uh, best practice to actually uh, encapsulate the context of a prompt within these delimiters so the chatbot knows what you're referring to. So as opposed to zero-shot prompting, summarization is giving the chatbot some context and then you can put the command. Summarize this text in five bullets. And then exactly that. So this is for me one of the most useful uses of these tools is to help you ingest pretty much this in you know large no amounts of content i read a lot of content every day and this really helps me with you know saving up the time of having to skim through a document and you know study it if you know how to summarize another approach is to actually summarize but with a framework so for example i'm going to paste again that article but I'm also, but my prompt will be slightly different. So instead of just summarize into five bullets, I'm gonna ask the chatbot, please summarize this article into the following, plot, tone, theme, setting, conflict, characters, and point of view. So basically, not only am I asking for a summary, I'm already giving the chatbot kind of the headings I want. And if I uh, send that command, it'll do exactly that. So it says here, the plot is Senator Marcos calls for an inquiry into the threat posed by AI. The tone of the article is concerned and critical. The theme is the impact of AI on jobs. The setting is the Philippines. The conflict is uh, between the rapid advancement of AI versus preserving jobs and BPOs. The characters are the senator and uh, some of uh, pretty much the senator. And finally, the point of view is this article is written in the third person. Again, you're not forced to use the same headings. I'm just using these seven headings, uh, which are called the seven elements of story, as a way of giving the chatbot a clue of what I want to see. So uh, imagine from the perspective of not just summarization, but research, or you're looking to ingest large amounts of content, and you want to extract certain pieces of information from the text, these chatbots are very, very good. Now that you know to summarize, another variation is to actually ask questions of the context that you give it. So I'm here pasting exactly the same article again, but this time instead of asking for a summary, I'm asking uh, questions to interrogate the story. For example, is Senator Marcos looking to ban AI? Or give three possible misinterpretations of this story? or give three possible outcomes of the story in the near term. So you see the difference. We're not just asking the chatbot to give us what was in the text. We're asking the chatbot's opinion of what was in the text. And we'll send that command. And then let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. So as you can see here, uh, the chatbot answered the question. So is Senator Marcos looking to ban AI? It says here, no. It's not, uh, the senator is not explicitly calling for a ban. Instead, she's calling for an inquiry into the use of AI and expressing concerns about its impact on employment. And give three possible misinterpretations of the story. Misinterpretation number one, Senator Marcos is advocating for a complete halt of AI, but that's not the case. Or two, the article suggests that AI adoption will result in immediate job losses. Again, that's a misinterpretation. And three, Senator Marcos is solely blaming AI for job losses without considering broader economic factors. Again, these are, these are opinions of the chatbot, but as you can see, they're very legit opinions if you read the article. Finally, give three possible outcomes of the story in the near term. Outcome number one, the Senate may initiate an inquiry about the impact of AI. I think that's actually happening already. Outcome two, government and industry stakeholders may collaborate to develop programs. Actually, that's also about to happen. And 
three, regulatory measures may be proposed and debated in Congress to address the potential job displacement caused by AI leading to potential policy changes in the near term. Again, these are all happening. So as you can see, the power of AI, not just to summarize uh, you know, uh, information, but to give uh, ideas or opinions about it. Another variation of this is what we call coaching. So, for example, if you, again, using the same article, but this time my query is, from the article below, please suggest three strategies to answer the inquiry. So again, it's an opinion, but more uh, an imperative. So, okay, you've seen this context, give ideas on how I can react to this uh, story or uh, strategies to address the, the points being raised by Senator uh, Marcos. And again, uh, here are some uh, sur surprisingly detailed answers. So it says here, to answer the inquiry initiated by Senator Marcos regarding the use of AI and its potential threats to workers in the BPO sector, here are three strategies. Number one, conduct a comprehensive impact assessment. That's a fair uh, suggestion. Uh, number two, develop upskilling and reskilling programs. Obviously, if AI is going to threaten jobs, the best way to ensure job security is to give BPO workers more skills. Maybe use AI. And three, formulate balanced regulatory measures. Obviously, AI poses opportunities but also poses risks, and the government's ability to regulate AI will be essential. Okay, I want to give one last uh, example of uh, using prompt engineering. And this is in auditing processes. So day to day, we, we have a lot of processes in our work. And sometimes you don't know if the process is broken. So this is one of my favorite prompts. Uh, you know, it's a process regarding coffee. So uh, I say here, here's a process. Get cup, add milk, add sugar, add coffee, add ice, and drink coffee. And what's missing in this process so have a look at it closely and see if you can guess what's missing from this process okay I'm gonna run that query now and this is the answer of uh, AI the process you provided outlines the basic steps for making coffee but it's missing some important details you forgot to boil water you forgot to brew the coffee you forgot to stir <laughs> you forgot to wait for dissolution strain or adjust the flavor so to make the process more complete, you can include these additional steps to ensure a well-brewed and well-mixed cup of coffee. So again, uh, see the implications of this on your day-to-day -day work. Uh, we're you know, doing a lot of process flows, we're doing a lot of management, and we often don't have time to have a look at what we're doing. You can use AI, specify what you're doing, and to give you opinions about how to do your work better. So, hope you enjoyed these tips. Uh, I'm sure all of it from the zero shot to the summarization to the question and answer and to the process uh, in, uh, flow. The important thing here is to get you started in using prompt engineering to improve your productivity, creativity, and knowledge management. And if you like this free video and you want to get more, we're offering a short three-hour paid course uh, this will be live instructor-led. Uh, and if you're interested, there's a link below to register for this course where you'll get more tips like these practical, easy-to-do prompts that you can use immediately in your work. You don't need any experience in programming or computer science at all. You can use AI immediately. So I hope you enjoyed that free video tutorial on prompt engineering. And yeah, hope to see you on the next one.